Today is May 28th, start of a three-day weekend for some of us. And that said, yours truly could be hitting the local lake, Lake Levon, for some fishing. Hopefully with some of those slab and jig rigs that yours truly has been making over the course of the last couple of weeks. And with that, did find out, looking at Google Earth, looking at the historical function that we learned from some other folks on YouTube, that, hey, take a look at your local lake and see what maybe structure is hidden there because what we found out looking at some of the data over the years is Lake Levon has fluctuated in water level upwards of 29 feet over the past 20 years that well we've been around here. I'm going to take a look at Google Earth and maybe there might be some key things that well I might be able to take in uh, account this next round especially this weekend at Lake Levon. All right let's check out the video. Here is Lake Levon. This is our local lake that yours truly likes to go fishing. I've been fishing this one for a little over 20 years. And since 2000 to the current date, the water level has fluctuated upwards of 29 plus feet. And this snapshot is showing November 14, 2020. And what we're going to do is take you back in time and hopefully show you what has happened to the lake. In particular, one portion that... I like to fish. I call it the point off of Rockdale Park. And over the course of this snapshot in time, hopefully we'll be able to give you an idea of some of the things that we've learned and maybe this weekend, maybe catch a fish or two. So this is Brockdale Park. You come down this road and here's the parking area. And this is showing 2020. But now let's go and shift back in time using this function that's available on Google Earth. Take us back to January 31, 2001. You can see the water level has gone up close to the parking lot. It's very high in this case. There's the parking area and there's the water and it's pretty close. And later on over the course of the years, you'll see that water will drop as well as come up right into the parking lot itself. This is what we're calling the point off of Brockdale Park. That was February 2001 and according to February 2001, this snapshot, this is where I've got it listed as zero as the start of our timeline. So the next thing that I'd like to show you is what happened the next snapshot in time in Google. That's going to take you to March 2005. And in this case, from 2001 to 2005, the water level dropped six feet. And using 2000, uh, that first snapshot, you're going to see that progression. So let me walk you through this real quick. So that's 2005. Next, it's going to be October 2005. There's going to be a drop of negative 13. So 13 feet since 2000, the water's dropped. And you can now see that there's some land where this one was once covered with water. Now let's go and shift again to October 2007. Water's back up a little bit. It's only eight feet down from 2001. And we'll go now to the next one. This is 2008. And the water is just about seven feet, so not too bad. Let's go to March 2011. So now you're starting to see a lot of the land here. And back in here, some of the creek area that was originally covered with water in that 2000 snapshot. So let's take it to 2000... Let's see, 2012, it dropped to 5. 2013, it's going to go to 18. You can see a lot of this area is now open. Now let's go to 2014. I believe this is going to be the lowest point. And you can see brushes grown over and there's a lot of, you can see the creek and all this and a lot of structure here. Things that will be covered, especially recently with the rains, this is all covered underwater. Probably want to keep in mind next time we go out there that there is some things down there that might hold a fish or two. So this is November 2014, dropped down to 19.16 feet from the 2001 snapshot. In March of 2015, it's still low, but but it did go up a little bit. I think it's like only 11 foot low from 2001. And then after that, it got November, December, water's already coming back up. So look at this. Water has gone up. Now it's 4.62 feet above what that 2001 snapshot is. And you can over here, you can see the water has gone up into the parking area now. Boat ramp's covered. So over here, this whole area is just covered. And I believe I've got a... Uh, a video where I use my kayak cart, taking it down from the front entrance down up, up here, I think it was, right here. 
and I take the, the kayak using this little cart drop off here and then I go and fish this area and I, I think I'll, I'll put a video of it here and maybe a little inset or something but this is 4.62 feet above that 2001 snapshot where the water was just over here by the parking area or just where its normal elevation was so keep that in mind when we look at the structure or that submerged structure eventually <laughs> all right so let's go back back out and now let's go to april 2016 so now the parking lot's open again you can see it and now it's only just a little bit 0.78 feet below that 2001 snapshot as our reference point and then the next one is going to be january 2017 it's going to drop now to nine feet below that 2001 snapshot so there it is again here's all this land now available to, to fish off the bank of maybe worth the point oh, all kinds of stuff now let's go to 2017 timber water's going up a little bit it's only five feet below so it went up from the nine foot below about four feet now we're going to go to 2018 it's going to be above that 2001 reference and you'll see the water's coming back up again and it looks like parking area is still clear look like they just black topped it and so they oh wow that's pretty interesting they black topped it back then i did some uh, work on it looks like march 2018 excellent okay so let's shift over to 2018 again but now later november and november 2018 is now three foot above the 2001 reference point 2019 it's going to drop 2020 it's going to drop as well about eight to nine feet below let's just take a look at that real so there's 2019 you can see some of the area over here opening up some and then december more area opening up and then november still the area is opened up and keep in mind what you see here is all underwater now Let's go and see if we can learn anything from this. What I'm going to do now is show some key points that I noticed. Here's a creek that was submerged that we'll see later on pick up. There's going to be this area right here in blue. is all area where when the water dropped, that's where the bank ended up. And so knowing that, in this case it's 2020 we're about eight feet below that 2001 snapshot when we take it to that blue i think it's going to be november i think it's at that 20 foot or 19.16 feet drop so that's that's almost like an 11 foot drop when you're seeing this picture here to where it hits that blue line keep this one in mind there's another point where the the shoreline is going to run along this green line. Then this area here is a creek that we'll see, as well as another creek that you'll see show up. From there, we notice several things. One is a bunch of trees. Oh, there's going to be a tree over here, a tree over there, a fallen log-like thing, and here's a tree as well. Let me go and zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. So all along here. Okay. And there's another one I wanted to throw in there calling it the creek left and right. So here there's going to be another point in time. I think this is 2011 where this creek will be prominent and you'll be able to see the shoreline as well as the water. So the other thing that I wanted to capture was this deep tree line. All these are a set of trees all along this section here that even though the water went down to its lowest level, these trees showed up, but a lot of them still stayed submerged. So this kind of tells me maybe this might be a good place to take a look at. Let me bring us out now. Let's go to 2014. That's when it's the lowest it's been over the 20 year period. November 2014. This is the lowest the lake was over this 20 year period. Right here. And I've been here before during this time period. And I, I've gotten a first-hand look at this area. And what happens is, is you can actually walk out to this area, sort of wade uh, into it at certain times of the year or when the water level is up. Here is why uh, I could do that, because this is sort of a gradual slope right here, and then it drops off to a deep area again. And what that tells me is, is 
that explains why I've been getting a bunch of these strikes, especially when I'm working the point with the kayak and doing some slab and jig uh, bottom bouncing. Is I'm bottom bouncing along this section here, and I'm getting some good hits. And so that's good to know. And we'll just go scan back out. And so this blue line here is where the water level was and or the bank and right here you can see there's a deep section where mouth of a creek didn't uh, really understand that that was there along with this tree line area uh, until I noticed this out of the Google Maps or this Google Earth piece so let's go and scroll back out so once this place is submerged uh, I suspect I'll go past these trees and kind of look for this deep area here as well as a deep area here and this creek bed area so all along here it looks like there's some promising things to work off of maybe a, a hidden fish or two kind of working in that channel area the submerged channel in this case or submerged creek so let's go back out again for 2013 and 2012 submerged again there's 2011 so here's here's another one to keep in mind this is march 2011 you can see a creek area here here you can see sort of the where the bank is at this point okay and at this time of year or this point in time water was 11 foot below that 2001 snapshot 11 foot drop tells me that this whole area will be uncovered in the span of a let's see 11 to 19 so eight feet so there's like an eight foot depth change or something right here to keep in mind so hey tells me that maybe we got some submerged areas to try come this weekend <laughs> all right so let's go back now take you to this point here i'm going to bring us in so look at this there's a the creek bed all this time I used to just fish this area here off the point, work this area, maybe pop a, a tree over here. Uh, I've done trot lines and used some of these trees as uh, anchor points. Also worked this area over here along this section here, but never really worked this, this deep tree line. But I have caught fish all along this whole area, mainly just trolling, and it's more hit and miss, but... Uh, I think maybe the next time I go out there with a the depth finder, I might uh, see if I can find this submerged creek area right here and here along with this whole area here. And then instead of doing what I have been doing where I follow the bank. So let's go, let's go to a more recent view. When I'm trolling, what I've been doing is taking the kayak and just kind of edging along the bank here, all along here, kind of paralleling it. And it looks like I've got a good opportunity right along this whole area here because there's a little drop off here where this bank was and that bank is. So that probably explains why I'm getting some good hits off the point as well as getting some good hits along this area as well. So what I haven't been doing is working along this area. What I have is been going along here along this bank and that may explain why I'm not getting as many hits as I could if I would just stay out a little bit further. I'll play that by ear, check it out with the depth finder, see if I can find some more information there and see if it tells me more. Anyhow, uh, that's how I plan on using this. Uh, stay tuned. Maybe this weekend I'll be able to tell you more about what I saw versus if I find these different points and whatnot and maybe uh, catch a fish or two. Before we go though, I do want to show you something real quick. This is another area. There's a first bridge that we come across here as you're going to, it's called Highland Park. And there's a popular fishing area just off this section here. You can see it's a parking area. People go there and fish all the time. But what I want to show you is, let's go show you that transition from 2001 to when, when the water was at its lowest, 2014. So that was 2001. This is 2005. This is 2007. So pretty steady. 2008 still steady there's 2009 let's go and shift back real quick to 2008 i want to show you something right here this is that year that they were working on the bridge creating a new bridge rerouting it and then eventually this one went away so what happened here let's take a look at it 2009 it's gone 
So now let's go to 2011. Things are starting to gradually get lower and lower to eventually, I think it's 2014 that we're trying to get to. Right? There's 2013. Everything's dry. Look at that creek bed, little channel here. Everything's pretty much drying out. Look at this. Right here, there's barely any water. I think this is pretty much drying up. Let's go to 2014, right here. Look at that. Whole area is dry, and you can see where the water is down here. But look right here, where that bridge, the old bridge was. Okay, there's the creek channel. Here, coming right here. It's about, mm, about midway, or a little bit closer to the left versus the right where this creek bed or creek channel is. But look at that. I've just taken us down to where the old bridge was and I don't see it anymore. It's, it's completely gone. There's no deep area, nothing, no pilings, nothing. So good to know. Also good to know that there's that creek bed. All right, so look at this right there. Followed along. So when you, maybe when the water's back up, Get an idea where those fish are and maybe try fishing that as well all right so let's just go back up in time here real quick look at that everything's covered with water now let's go back to 2014 and i'm going to mark this spot right here just say the creek bridge just so i have that as a reference point underwater but I know that at this point right here I should be able to key in on the creek here okay so the creek's gonna go you can see the creek up here and it's gonna kind of wind around so it looks like you can work your way in this direction with your depth finder and try working this creek bed or maybe just kind of work your way along until you find some fish hiding so that's good to know and then just as a, an idea uh, to see how deep this water is, uh, just roughly going by the snapshot in time. So this is November 2014, referencing oh, 2001, February 2001. So it's 19, negative 19 or 19 feet below the 2001 snapshot. So I'm going to take us back up. There's 2012, everything's kind of filled in now. And August 2012, it's negative 10.33, so 10 foot below. So it's a nine foot difference from the reference point between 2014, when it was 19 feet below 2001's level. And now in 2012, it's 10 feet below the 2001 level. So it's a nine foot difference so right off the bat that tells me this this is going to be at least nine feet if you take this land long that's showing right now and mark that on the bridge that will tell you that's where the creek passes underneath the bridge and from there that could be a good starting point start working your way back up the creek and seeing if you can find a, a fish or two maybe hiding in there and, and maybe some of y'all have been out there and, and have fished this area you notice time and time again you keep consistently getting a fish or two right in that area. I hope uh, this has been helpful. Plan on looking at a couple other places. Actually, wait. Well, yeah, you got me started now. So <laughs> I'm kind of interested in this other spot. And this is by, where is it now? There it is. The island right here. Over here by Clear Lake Park. This is one that I, I've, I've fished over the years many times. I've noticed consistently I get pretty good hits right off the point here, this area here, along this area here, along this area, right along here, as well as coming back here and then heading out to the glass house. Kind of staying in this area. Let's go take a look at what it was back in 2001. There it is. Everything's kind of flooded and everything. So really high water. Let's go to that dreaded year. 2014. Look at this. You can actually walk across here now from the mainland to the island. <laughs> but here is what I want to show is right here. So this is the pier in a parking area. This is another parking area. This is a courtesy dock. 
those are all on land and you can see this whole area is on land here and there's little cut or little indentation so there's a little deeper area here as it gradually comes up which explains a lot of things when it comes to some of the fish that i've caught in this area back in here are some trees and whatnot i've caught, caught some pretty good fish off of this bank here working this point Right here and you can see it's a rocky kind of rocky bottom shoreline and you can kind of bounce bottom pretty good uh, all along here i've caught them kind of bouncing along here so when that water levels up look at this you got a nice transition or, or structure where the fish may be hanging out as well as over here uh, that's good to know coming back over here to the point of the of the island look at here this kind of explains a lot of why you're catching a few of these fish, especially on those windblown days where the shad are getting kicked up and they're kind of hovering in this area. So a lot of good information to be had on this Google Earth piece. Okay, here we go. So I've worked off this area here and fished this area as well, along this area, back down in here with the kayak. And what I want to do is just kind of take a look at something. Right here, look at this shoreline area. Oh, this area right here kind of explains why I've been able to catch some fish bottom bouncing and it tend to hit here. This is interesting here. Little, I don't know what that's called, maybe a little point or whatnot. All right, so a little point and adjustment, and there's a little deep area here. There's the boat ramp. Let's see what it looks like if you go forward. 2020 look at that it's underwater there's some kind of little pool water like structure let's go back to 2014 right there so let's go and mark it off with a little polygon thing here so here is a little point thing come back around let's do that um, what does that do for us? Let's go and bring us here now. Look at that. Underwater. <laughs> you did not know that. Interesting. Look at that. So let's go back to 2014. Right there. Boat ramp. Kind of work your way around. And right along here, there is something... Along with this jutting point, and then it looks like there's something over here that's kind of showing some shallowness. So there's some structure here and some areas here, which explains why I've, I've caught fish here, bottom bouncing some slab and jig rigs. Let's go and let's go and do this. Let's add another path this way and just see where that takes us this way and let's jut it out here. And I kind of see something right along here. All right, and then. Let's go and grab this area here on this shoreline. Just want to see kind of what it looks like once we bring up the water. So let's go cover it with water. Look at that. So all along here is structure that maybe holding some fish. All right, all for now. Next time, we'll catch you later. Good luck and good fishing.